Yesterday was Tuesday, which makes today. <laughs> Big news Wednesday with JR Jackson. How's it going, JR? Uh, I'm, I'm, I was, I was still waiting, bated breath. What's up, you guys? <laughs> well, it's here. It's here. <laughs> we hit hump day, news hump day, and uh, very glad to have you back. I think we got a pretty awesome rundown for today. I think so. Why not? <laughs> Why not? What an endorsement. <laughs> I'm gonna put that on the box, Air Jackson, why not? Anyway, uh, I do think it's awesome. We're gonna do a lot of different stuff. We're gonna be starting off with what, what I would classify as nonsense. The right has gotten too cringy. I can't take it any longer, so I'm going to try to save them from themselves in a little bit. And then we've got uh, two awesome blocks of paired stories. So two have to do with January 6th, uh, dudes in prison for it. And he can't take the other insurrectionists anymore. And I just think that's the best story ever. So and then Marjorie Green is talking more, so that's fun. Then more inductions into the billionaire defense force. We've got people inside and outside of government making sure that nothing bad ever happens to a billionaire. I think with their efforts, we can reach a time, an America, where a billionaire never has to go through even just like, you know when like your sock kind of falls down a bit and it won't stay up. I won't tolerate a billionaire suffering in that way. And so we're working, we're working towards that. And then there's a bunch of other stuff. Kyle Rittenhouse, we got Neil Cavuto, we got a whole bunch of fun stuff. So JR, what do you think? Should we eventually do this? Uh, why not? I got reasons. <laughs> oh, one reason is that you guys haven't hit the like button yet, have you? I'm talking to you. You didn't hit it. You know that you didn't, but you need to. You know that you need to. You can hit the like button. It'll help us out in algorithmic ways. Um, and if you want to send us messages, <laughs> comments, tweets, super chat, stuff like that, that'll be awesome as well. Now, with that said, let's start off with a little bit of fun as we launch into this video. Wait, you know what I'm going as. What are you I, going as? Brandon. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> let's go, Brandon. <laughs> That's hell. Anyway, uh, so what you had there was Harris Faulkner on, I don't know, one of their shows. It's all the same nonsense at this point. Why did they even name them? But she said, I'm going as Brandon. <laughs> and then the others are like, oh <laughs> let's, let's go, Brandon. Yeah, we got him. Now, do you know what that means? <laughs> are you watching this and you don't know what it is? Just write your thing. Okay, so here's what they did. They wanted to say F Joe Biden. You can't say that. I mean, come on, what are we adults? So they came up with let's go brain, and it means the same thing. They found a way around it. It's a cheat code, everybody. A cheat code to be able to swear <laughs> on the air. How exciting is that, JR? And they did it on Fox as Harris Faulkner. Brandon. <laughs> I'm Brandon. You know what that means? Huh, Joe? You know what it means, Joe? Are you still sleeping, Joe? Cause F you. I mean, sorry, I would never say that. I would only say, let's go, Brandon. Yeah. <sighs> what the it's hell a, is wrong with okay. this country? I've been saying this a lot recently. There's been this, uh, every time you hear someone from either side, from either political uh, leanings, whatever, right, left, and in between, if they don't have anything substantive about the reasons why they're saying something, or their stances, or their campaigns like, let's go, Brandon. They don't have anything. Yes, that's from both sides. There's plenty of Democrats who don't have anything. They get fed what they're gonna do, what they're gonna say, and how they legislate. It's just the way it is. Now, let's go, Brandon. It's supposed to be this gotcha. But mm -hmm. what is that doing? Think about it. What is let's What's go, do? Brandon, doing? What's the point? The point is to have this, this to generate this like, quote unquote, secretive but not secretive f you Joe Biden thing, for people who dislike Joe Biden. So what does that do? As far as Joe Biden, what does that do with Joe Biden? Your issues with with the supply chain issues. With I was listening to dumbass Sean Hannity last night, late at night, and I was half asleep. And sometimes you have a different brain, a, a function when it's late and you're half asleep. I was like, they're just not talking about anything. Mm -hmm. So it's it's let's go, Brandon. What is that doing for the electorate? What's that doing for your viewership? What's that doing for the the, uh, uh, the uh, legislation? And point they pointed out supply chain issues. They point out how expensive Thanksgiving is going to be this year. They point out gas prices. They point out his approval ratings. And I was like, okay, you can address all these things that you have an issue with. What does Let's Go Brandon do for those things? 
don't what does Let's Go Brandon do for the gas price that you've been bitching and complaining about? What does it do for it? It doesn't do anything. What does watching Sean Hannity do for you? Why are you doing that to yourself, buddy? <laughs> anyway, people are asking the audience. It doesn't do anything. It is it is so perfect though, because of exactly what you were saying. That like we have to try to fit all of the news that we want to talk about, we cut it down and cut it down and cut it down into what we can fit into the show. And we always produce too much because there's too much we want to talk about. They have a very different problem at Fox News and their politicians have a very similar problem, which is I don't want to talk about any of the stuff that's actually going on, but I have to talk. We can't just stare in silence. You saw the last couple seconds of that video. That was terrible. We can't do hours of that. So we have to talk about something and um, I don't know, the Dr. Seuss publishers aren't really up to much and uh, Mr. Potato Head, nothing's going on there. We've got a phrase, everyone. <laughs> and so that has swept through the right. Now, many of you for a long time have thought that the right isn't funny. Well, jokes on you, it's certainly not on them because they don't get jokes. Uh, yeah, they, they found something that's very funny and it is everywhere, people. You have this congressman, this is Jeff Duncan has it on a mask. Look, I'm just glad he's wearing a mask, honestly. <laughs> uh, Lauren Boebert has it on a sign. Marjorie Green has it on a plane. <laughs> and Marjorie Green was herself chanting it in a video. Uh, let's see, Ted Cruz is posing in front of the picture. And then he's saying it in a video. Oh, How happy is Ted Cruz about this? First of all, that human willingly talked to him. He hasn't experienced that in literally years. So he's very excited right off the bat. And he's like doing something fun and cool. He feels so <laughs> great. And but really, like this is all Ted Cruz wants to feel like there's some connection between him and conservative voters that has nothing to do with literally anything. This doesn't have to do with your mortgage. This doesn't have to do with your health insurance. This doesn't have to do with your student loans. This doesn't have to do with anything. And he doesn't have to do anything. None of them do. They hold up a sign, they tweet out a thing, they wink at the camera, and nothing improves for their voters, but their voters feel an attachment. Isn't it fun, JR? It's 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 it, it's the big illustration of what they have with their voters, which is I was gonna say high school, but it's more middle school uh, uh, taunts and chants. It's really all this. Now, by the way, with the Harris Faulkner thing, and they go on a break, and they say, you know, I'm going for Halloween as uh, Brandon. Like, if that's the one and only one of only few times that this is brought up or mentioned or is the thing, I actually don't care because this is the thing. That insult isn't much of an insult. Who cares? Who cares? Like, if you walk up to me, and and for some reason, let's go, Brandon has been attributed to Fujr. I'm gonna go. Okay, and I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> I, I've, horrible things have been said to me. I, I used to do athletics. I was an athlete. People said horrible things to me. I don't care. I don't care. So this is this is only to to galvanize people's mindsets of anger and hatred for certain people. That's all it is. It's yeah. hey, we're saying f you every time that we say this, and then what? Yep. Nothing. All it is, 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 and then in the very next segment, they'll say, look at Joe Biden and how he's dividing America. That's 100%, 100%, and that, that is where we will turn because they did do that with Joe Biden. Did you know at one point he called Republican governors who were like, like arm in arm with COVID, um, he called them Neanderthals and Fox melted down like Raiders of the Lost Ark over that. How could he call them Neanderthals? That's not even a swear, that's not even a swear, that's scientific. That's like as far from a swear <laughs> as you can get. And they lost it over that. And then Hillary called them deplorables. How could you do that? Even though, again, it's not even a swear. Um, and I want to be very clear. Uh, my opposition to this, because I've talked about this in a couple of pre-shows, is that um, I'm a connoisseur of cringy humor to some extent. I go on the subreddit. Uh, I watch British comedies. Um, <laughs> I've sat through Scott's tots without fast forwarding it. But even I have a limit and you've gone too far. You may not understand why this makes you look so childish. That grown ass adults who could just say F Biden are instead doing this. I'm just trying to help you. It doesn't offend me. I want to be very clear about that, except comedically. It doesn't affect, like, if you want to say F Joe Biden, say it. You know who's said F Joe Biden? 
this guy. I'm an adult and I don't like him. So I can swear at him and so can you. I have a 10 step plan that involves putting words together and saying them out of your mouth hole if that's what you wanna do. But while it doesn't offend me to swear at a politician, I do wanna be clear that there are some people who think that there should be a level of decorum and we should have civil society. Don't go talk to Tucker Carlson in a Bass Pro shop, that's uncivil. Um, And they didn't like some similar things. Now, we didn't have let's go Brandon for Donald Trump, but once he did go uh, to the World Series and they did boo him. Uh, You might remember that unless you watched on Fox because they literally edited the boos out of it. (laughs) But they did talk about it afterward and they did not like it. Uh, Tommy Lauren said, lock him up, how original. It's sad these Trump haters can't even come up with their own jeers. Still, our president didn't seem phased by the booing whatsoever. It's not surprising these heckling jerks didn't seem to bother our president. Sure, a baseball stadium setting during the World Series is certainly a popular place, but our president fills comparably sized stadiums like that at almost every rally. And he does it with just a podium and American flag. That's true, he can do that, and Biden didn't do that, but then Biden did beat him in the election, Tommy. So, you know, he's got that going for him. But look at that, heckling jerks, they're not gonna stand for heckling jerks, JR. It's just an it's, like heckle whoever you want. Honestly, I really don't care. No, but try to be clever about it. It's so weird. That's all I'm saying. It's just weird that this is a victory. It's an. It's such. This. These are the victories. They're empty and they're and they're childlike. That's this. That's what we've got. We've got where they think they've just won something. There's your prize. Here, take your prize and run. I, I got a handful of it for you. There's nothing there. Just take it. I, it's. <sighs> <laughs> yep. Oh, by the way, so I was like drawing a line between her and but between Tommy Lauren. This oh, Tommy Lauren tweeted it by the way. Let's go, Brandon. So again, she wouldn't want you to be a heckling jerk or anything, but she thinks that's very clever. Well, John, anyway, by the way, for anyone who's confused by the Let's Go Brandon the origins, like maybe people don't understand that it means F you Biden because of a chant that an announcer thought they were saying Let's Go Brandon, the baseball game. I think it was a baseball game. Yep. And he mistook it for let's go Brandon when they were saying F Joe Biden. That's all, that's that's where this came from. So it was organic. <laughs> yeah, I. it's just so, like, I, I guess a lot of right wingers probably aren't watching oh, NASCAR. NASCAR. Yes. Um, a lot of right wingers aren't watching this, but like you, you can put a little bit of thought behind. There's literally millions of you. Like even if even if each of you had one or two neurons, Get your heads in the same room and put something together. You've got to be clever than this. And by the way, this is not the first cringeworthy thing in politics. Some people have been giving examples of others. I remember seeing tweets and Instagram posts of Robert Mueller like photoshopped so he has abs. It's this weird thing where like people in politics have to take like their politicians and give them abs. They used to do it with Trump. That's really cringeworthy too. But you should know. I wasn't tweeting that out. (laughs) So anyway, um, we can all go too far, but thankfully we do have each other to help draw us back from the edge. And uh, the right wing desperately needs help with this right now. (sighs) Anyway, uh, that was our first topic. It's ridiculous, we'll (laughs) see if it helps. Um, We are gonna take a break. When we come back, uh, we're gonna talk, did you just type that? I'm trying to make sure that I'm not breaking rules. Okay, anyway, uh, so we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about the insurrection, the defense of it. And one person who participated in it and doesn't want to hang out with those weirdos anymore after this. Okay, everybody, we got some more news. JR, are you ready for it? Yes. Ah, oh, the wives, the, the makers of the Wheel of Time are doing a live stream. Oh, would you guys wait? Could I go watch a little <laughs> bit of that? Because I'm actually really excited for that show. No, damn. I'm watching it right now, John. John. Okay, <laughs> it seemed like it. Okay, uh, in that case, I guess we'll talk about the news. <clears throat> One of those who participated on January 6th apparently has had a bit of a change of heart. In one specific area, they had a special request having to do with other inmates. This is Thomas Sibick of Buffalo, New York, has made multiple requests for release from custody since he was arrested in March. Now, that's not new, lots of them have, but he argues that the atmosphere in the wing of the DC Correctional Treatment Facility was quote unquote toxic. So uh, this is apparently what that wing is like, because they've got a lot of people. Obviously, this was a you know a thing that had hundreds of people participating in. Uh, Every night at 9 p.m., the folks there stand up and sing the Star Spangled Banner. 
I was on the phone a month ago and in the middle of talking, I had to put the phone down. They'll be angry if I don't go over there. Oh, geez, that <laughs> that escalated. It's bad enough. Doing it, why nine? That's so weird. Um, and doing it every night, that's needless. But like, if they're pressuring other people to do it, they wouldn't like propagandize or anything. Uh, he says this, it was literally this herd mentality. They're literally singing, almost cult like. It was pretty scary, actually. Bear in mind, this is a guy who was in the attack on the Capitol. Now he's worried about cult like behavior. <laughs> he's swinging the flag of Trump with the abs and the pecs and the delts and all that. <laughs> But like, I don't want to be in a cult. Come on, now they're singing. Singing is an important part of cult. So I agree with him there, Jr. But he had a problem with being kept in the same area as those people. And he I said it was. That. He said it was scary. It's scary now. It's scary to be around people who are this minion-like over Trump. And they'll, they'll collect to their prison areas and start singing uh, the Star Spangled Banner with pressure on other people. Same people who like to spout freedom. <laughs> do what you want, free society, all those things. But maybe I guess once you're in jail, those free you're not free anymore. So maybe you have to start collecting it together and start demanding others follow your protocol for continuing your cult like behavior towards your Lord and Savior, Donald Trump. That's just the way that they're going towards this. And this guy, I'm not sure what he was thought he was involved in. As you pointed out, he was at the rallies and he was at the, the insurrection at the Capitol. Nothing was scary then. Nothing was cult like then, and nothing was all groupthink then either. But now it is. He had to put down a phone call with his mom, so now he's upset. Yeah, come on, bro. We got a little bit more serious. Um, so look, obviously I'm I'm a little bit torn on this, but yeah, I I would not want to be around those crazy people too. I mean, they're they are violent people. Is it impossible to imagine that if you don't comply with these cult behaviors that you might be putting yourself at some risk? I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure that that's not true. But anyway, we're gonna go through some more of the details. So uh, his lawyer, Stephen Brennald, uh, said that Sibic, who was uh, seen to be one of the more high profile defendants in the jail, requested to be put in solitary confinement, known as the hole, in order to avoid dealing with the other inmates. That is amazing. <laughs> How much do you not wanna hang out with these jokers that you're willing to go to solitary? People die from being kept <sighs> away from other humans. And he's like, give me that. Um, <laughs> Now, I would, but few others would. Now, uh, Civic is in jail because Civic was uh, charged several counts, including assaulting a police officer and robbery. He was accused of stealing the radio and badge of Michael Fanone, this uh, uh, DC police officer we've talked about uh, several times. Fanone was knocked unconscious and suffered a heart attack during the riot. So this is one of the individuals who was beating a cop at this. So. It's the sort of thing that I'm assuming, you know, the correctional facilities and the justice system being the way it is. They're probably going to be less lenient with you, I would imagine. But anyway, um, that's what he wants. And uh, you know, back on the sixth, he was all fired up. We're gonna overthrow this thing. I'm gonna beat a cop. You know, blue lives matter. Like you say that, and you hit on each of the the words. That's how you do that chant. Um, but now doesn't doesn't want to be around them. It's, I guess okay. it's, it's become more real. <laughs> now now it's real. The guy who assaulted a police officer, who's been charged with assaulting a police officer. In robbery, beating up a cop and then he has a heart attack uh, with whatever he was beating him up with. Again, this same guy said the chants and the singing and the and the, the cult-like behavior in jail is the scary part. Yep, that's the scary part. So hey, I went into a, a bank robbery with my boy, and as soon as this ran in, I screamed, "Give me all the money!" And then the, the, my my uh, my accomplice pulled out a gun. I went, "Oh my god, this just got scary." Hey, bro, <laughs> what do you think you were participating in? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> it's like we were we were we were loading like money into the bag, and then one of my accomplices pushed the bag into my chest, and I was like, "Hey, man, forget it, then I'm leaving." Just it's sometimes crime gets real. Um, okay, now uh, by the way, there's ten counts. So what's actually happened with Civic? Well, apparently they did listen. US District Court Judge Amy Berman Jackson, who we talked about previously on the show, agreed on Tuesday to release Civic to home confinement with his parents in New York under the condition he stays out of Washington, doesn't attend any political rallies or use social media, and refrains from watching any cable news. His father, Eugene, filed a letter with the court assuring the judge that his son, if released, would live at his home under whatever conditions the court imposes. The father said that he and his wife, Carol, guarantee that Thomas will have supervision 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
If Thomas were to attempt to leave the premises, I would not hesitate to inform the appropriate authorities immediately. Sure, sure. That good enough? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, okay, this is of course, I mean, this is the not, this is the unsurprising part that he does get his request to get released because he's uncomfortable in jail with his fellow cohorts. Oddly, I don't know why that's a reason to be released. After again, you assault a police officer, steal his badge and and and, uh, and other equipment. And then you go home because you're uncomfortable. Because there's a miniature prison game for gang forming around the same gang that was forming outside of prison. Yeah, I mean, hey, when people get in jail, they have to, you know, this is what I've heard, you know, gangs yeah. tend to form just for protection purposes. Hey, you better get with your people or you're going to be left alone, bro. These are yours. You're part of it. You want to know some more of the details of this gang? So here's some other stuff that Amy Berman Jackson said. So that Civic's actions, quote, certainly raise serious questions about how January 6th defendants are housed together. There are 44 Capitol riot defenders who are serving time pretrial in the separate wing of the DC Correctional Treatment Facility, which inmates call the, quote, Patriot Wing. One detainee told NBC4 that inmates in the wing have their own manifesto, which is great, great to have a manifesto, nothing bad about that. And also started their own handwritten newsletter, which they pass from cell to cell. All of this is strange behavior for Antifa. Why are they singing the national anthem and why do they have this man of their patriot wing? Wow, Antifa's <laughs> become more patriotic since they've been there. <laughs> it's so Love weird. The disconnect it. between the nonsense that is said about these people and literally they are like there are dozens and dozens of people in jail like please understand I'm a patriot. I love Trump. I'm going to kill a cop. You why do you call me Antifa? It's ridiculous that disconnect. We cannot yeah, get well, past it. I guess for people who may have been arrested and charged and in prison for, you know, an ounce of marijuana or anything else that, you know, many laws have not changed, they're still sitting in jail. Um, just tell them that you're part of the Patriots and you're yeah. part of the Patriot wing of the jail. Oh, and you love Donald Trump. Maybe they'll let you out. Maybe just tell them you assaulted a police officer and took his badge and equipment. Then maybe they'll let you out. But tell them you want to go to solitary confinement because you're sick of these a holes that you got arrested yeah. with. And maybe they'll let you out. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I'm looking for the for the formula. It looks like he's got it. Let me let me ask one final question. I want a super fast answer from you. And if anybody can do a poll um, on Twitch, uh, he says now he hates Trump. Do you buy it, or is it convenient that now he hates Trump before his trial and all he that? He hates what do you Trump think? until Trump says something else hateful enough that he can agree with. Um, but this is self preservation. Oh man, I hate Trump, man. I told him I'm on your side. Don't let me out. Let me out, bro. And he'll be at the very next event. 100%. Yeah, yeah, possibly. They've I mean, connected, look, I, they've I connected, they've connected their but. Trumpism with their identity. It's not a political uh, belief or leanings or, or advocacy. That is their identity. It's like saying, hey, I'm a you know grown man, but then you can't change that from what you you're like. You see yourself as that. He sees himself as a Trump person. Now I'm sure some of them hate Trump later. They've been awakened from the you know the, the the days that they were in, which I can't judge that for him. But this seems very convenient that now he hates Trump after his prison yeah. time. Um, I'm gonna I'm I'm releasing a poll on uh, the YouTube stream right now. I only have control over that one, so uh, we'll see what people think. Uh, but with that, <clears throat> why don't we launch into a related topic? Let's jump into this video. To look harder at the lies of Blue and On, because Blue and On, the dangerous media, the Democrat media that is so divisive and would do anything to cause someone like me to be killed or someone like you, Steve, to be killed because of the Democrat lies about us and about January 6th. You see, they're the real problem in the country, and I hope that these independent voters. These people that are starting to wake up, I hope they wake up to these lies because they're telling terrible things about us, things that are not true, and things about other Republicans that are not true, and innocent people that were at the Capitol on January 6th. But the real truth is the communist revolution that the Democrats funded and waged every single day and every single night in American cities all across our country. You see, that was an attack on innocent American people, whereas January 6th was just a riot at the Capitol. And if you think about what our Declaration of Independence says, it says to overthrow tyrants. So there's a clear difference between January 6th and the Marxist communist revolution that Antifa BLM Democrat ground troops waged on the American people in 2020. But this selfish, self-righteous, 
Congress that only serves itself refuses to talk about the people. All they want to talk about is the riot on January 6th. And I'm fed up with it. I'm sick of it. And I'm tired of their lies. People say that I don't have any talents and that's not true. Who else do you know that can talk about an assassination <laughs> plot against themselves and not change their inflection or tone even a whit? Yeah, that's um there was a lot there, JR, and we're probably going to miss a lot of different um a lot of different parts of that, but I have you ever let's let's jump into the middle. Have you ever heard a right winger say that something was just a riot? <laughs> just a riot. That's all that it was. Why you're acting like this is serious? It's just a riot. All it is is a riot, you guys. I mean, until it's the people that you don't like that you'll then label as a riot and looters and 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 anti-police. Again, the parallels are way too. Are, are, they're, they're they line up right there. It's like it wrote itself. These folks attacked police officers, broke into a federal building, uh, looted, stole, attacked. All these things that they keep talking about. That was happening over the summer, and they're like, "Oh, what are they gonna do something about it?" All we did was riot, <laughs> oh, bro. Why did you riot? Because they also don't like the word insurrection. They don't like that they were looking to overturn the election. We weren't trying to do that. We were just trying to have our voices heard by breaking windows and, yeah. and claiming we're gonna kill people. That's how you get your voice heard. Yeah, there was ah, it's just there was it's like so, okay, so. <laughs> I understand that a lot of people probably fell asleep slash had a stroke while listening to that. So I will try to catch you up. So. She talked about the same event. The event was what happened on the 6th and she described it in one breathless stream of unconsciousness as people that are innocent. They're innocent, which means it was nothing, okay? It was just a riot, which seems like then they weren't innocent because they were rioting. By the way, isn't it funny that she also compared it to um, the, the the social justice protests that were going on last year, which she has previously called riots many times. She can't quite call them riots now because after all, riots are just riots. They're not a serious thing. So she had to call it attacks against innocent people. Um, okay, so they're innocent, they're riots, and also they're just riots. And also uh, the Declaration of Independence says to take out tyrants. So they're innocent, they're Bad, but not that bad. And they're the best of us. They're basically uh, Captain America. <laughs> so which is it? Doesn't which matter. of those things is true? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay, so I, I, when as that was going and I saw it continued, I stopped and I looked away. And I was like, if you didn't know who this woman is, if you didn't know that she is an elected uh, a member of Congress, and you just turned on the TV and saw this woman talking for that entire time, you'd go, who let this random woman from Minnesota on TV to talk about whatever the hell it is that she's talking about? If there's no, there's no point. There's definitely no kind of cohesive thought process as to where this is going. It's just her rambling off and trying to find the right talking points enough times to fill this this speech that she has. This is who we're working with, and we have to detach ourselves sometimes and realize what it is that we're dealing with. She yeah. has nothing. We can say that, but if you stop and think about it, she's got nothing. She's got no original thought. She's got no other goals except for to, to progress this violent movement that obviously she's, well, I guess it's working to a degree. But this is what we've got as an elected official. And we accept it. Everybody, yeah. people that are against it, we accept it. We're like, yeah, it's just Marjorie Taylor Greene. Why? Yeah, I look, you're totally right. If you just saw her for the first time and you were to guess who she was, you you'd also kind of be right. Um, I moms are great, and moms who use Facebook are great. There's nothing inherently wrong with Facebook moms, but that is very much what she is. Now, I have a male relative who, every time I would hang out with him, he would show me these videos that were absolutely insane. So it <laughs> it happens all over the place. But those people are in Congress. Now, look, she's not. The first real crazy, I mean, Louis Gomer is a madman. And he might arguably be working with less brain matter than a Marjorie Green. So they've had crazies, and she's not even the only one. Lauren Boebert, right, she, I mean, she's done a little bit less conspiratorial stuff on video, but she also tweeted on January 6th, today is 1776. Assuming it goes well, if it's bad, I've got backup plans. <laughs> um, so that's the same argument that Marjorie Green was just making. Blood of tyrants, tree watering and all that, that's what she's saying. 
But Green does stand out in her willingness to talk at length in a monotone voice into a camera. And that is how, from watching her past videos, we know that she's advocated for violence against House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, President Barack Obama, said that an airplane never hit the Pentagon during the September 11th terror attacks, and accused former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton of slicing off a child's face and wearing it as a mask. Now, it is an indictment of a person's whole thing. If you could read a whole paragraph of them being crazy, and there wasn't time to get to the Jewish space lasers. <laughs> but anyway, I want to make sure that we mention it. But there's a lot of crazy stuff to go around. Yeah, and, the um, thing is, yeah. I, and, and this is injected as the same way that uh, uh, Matt Gates injected it. It's now they're out for me. You spot violence, you push angry rhetoric, you tell them that we're gonna come for this person, that person pulled off a child's face. Uh, look at these Marxist, communist, socialists coming for you. Um, uh, when are we gonna finally start killing off the tyrants? And then in the same long breath, says they're out to kill me. Yeah. So you weaponize your supporters to literally go in, into violence and say you're going to kill someone blatantly, but they're coming for you. Yeah, it doesn't have to make sense. Yeah, hundred percent. She says insane things, and she literally said she says she has said in the past there are times when we have to put a bullet in the head of politicians. She said that about Nancy Pelosi. Well, then you're setting the stage for threats of political violence, which, by the way, we don't agree with about literally anyone, even as crazy and as traitorous a person as Marjorie Green. Nobody should threaten any violence whatsoever against her. You should just donate to the person trying to take her out politically <laughs> and get her the hell out of Congress. Um, but anyway, yeah, my final point on this is uh, the blue non thing, uh, marginally clever, uh, undercut in a couple of different ways. Uh, so one is, first of all, if somebody's gonna make the case that uh, the Dems have their own version of QAnon, it's blue anon, aren't they kooky too? You shouldn't say that if you believe in QAnon, because you're just saying other people as crazy as, wait, me, that's that's weird. Also, calling it blue anon makes it seem as if it's about cops in some way. You're muddying, muddying the waters a little bit there. Um, and also you are saying that QAnon is crazy when you are on video saying he seems like he's got the people's will at heart and uh, we're finding out many things about him. <laughs> I didn't say that so I can make fun of uh, Democrat conspiracies, um, but you are on very shaky ground. Anyway, um, okay, we're going to take our break when we come back. The billionaires, desperately in need of help. They need a hero as we did in the 80s and they found them. We've got more people forming the Billionaire Defense Force after this. Okay, everybody, couple more updates of thing that's uh, things that are coming up. Uh, tomorrow we have our tier three member Q&A. How awesome is that gonna be? We've been hanging out every month back for, it's getting close to a year actually now. Our tier three members on YouTube, we hang out at 12 p.m. Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. We got a post up on the community tab where you can post questions and comments. I know some of you do every time and I love you for it. Thank you so much for that. If you want to upgrade your membership or become a tier three member, you can hang out and we'll talk about whatever you want. Maybe we'll talk about the new Wheel of Time trailer. Maybe we'll talk about Dune. Maybe I still won't have seen it. But anyway, um, we'll have that going. Maybe I'll watch it tonight actually in advance of it. Okay, and also I want to let you know that if you're interested in possibly uh, you know, doing a little bit of work here at TYT, we have new positions open, new video content creator roles at Rebel HQ available for people who want to uh, write, host, produce, and edit short form editorial videos talking about breaking news, politics, and that sort of thing. If you're interested, you can go to tyt.com slash careers to find out more. You'd basically be doing the same sort of work as awesome people like uh, Adrian Lawrence, David Schuster, and Richard Ojeda as well. So how awesome is that? You can be a part of it. Also Indisputable will be coming up after our program. Dina Dahl is gonna be hosting, Jason Reed will be on for a debate. You have got Rashad Ritchie, obviously it's gonna be a lot of fun. That's coming up right after our program at youtube.com slash indisputable tyt. Now with that, JR, you ready to talk about some nonsense? <laughs> I think we've proven that I am. <laughs> That's true. I mean, this is less nonsense than the Brandon thing. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. Are we doing the live linear? I said Brandon. Is that okay? Are we going to get taken off the air? I was so edgy, John. Stop being edgy. <laughs> it's baked into my DNA. Anyway, we're never going to achieve mainstream success if I keep dropping B bombs like that. Okay, so let's talk about some news. <clears throat> 
The most exciting domestic political news this week is the possibility of a new tax. As part of the reconciliation infrastructure bill, Democrats are considering a new innovative tax on billionaires. So why are they going in this direction now? Well, they had to because over the weekend, Kirsten Cinema signaled that she would not allow literally any other tax on corporations, capital gains. Personal income taxes, basically get your hands off the millionaires. So the Democrats said, hey, what about billionaires? And hey, what do you know? Kirsten Cinema indicated she might actually be down for it. We've got headlines on sites like I believe this is Politico. Cinema steers Dems into uncharted territory on taxes. Until recently, Cinema didn't appear to have much interest in the tax issues, you know, except for stopping them. So that's weird. That's I would not have expected that, that she would be in favor of that. What could possibly explain that? We'll have the answer for you in just a second. But I want you to know that this um, tax is considered significant in terms of how much money it could raise for the federal government. Previous estimates put potential revenue at about $150 billion over 10 years. Although Senator Angus King said it could raise $300 billion to $400 billion. And it is innovative and it is a little bit complicated. And if you want to find out the specifics of exactly how it would work. There are some good explainers, including this one on Fast Company, unrealized capital gains tax. This is the plan Elon Musk and other billionaires don't like. So if you want, you can go to one of those explainers and they will break down all the details. But I'm gonna do you a public service. Don't waste your time because it ain't happening. You wanna <laughs> know why cinema's okay with it all of a sudden? Because Mansion's coming into bat for Mansion indicated today, no, we're not doing that either. I don't like it. I don't like the connotation that we're targeting different people as people that basically they contributed to society and create a lot of jobs and a lot of money and give a lot to philanthropic pursuits. But it's time that we all pull together and grow together. What you might mean? be sick of things trickling down onto you, but what about expanding together? We can do that, JR, what but that not mean? with the billionaire tax. What does that mean? Now, so that last means part, no tax. <laughs> it's time that we all pull together and grow together. Now, if you already have an uneven taxing system where the people that you want to pull together with aren't paying their share of taxes, and the people that are pulling for everything else in the country are paying their fair share and then not getting anything for it, we all come together and do what? We already came together and we're doing all the work while you guys are benefiting from it and then saying, hey, we're gonna trickle down a couple of pebbles on you and then that's it. And everyone's making all this money. It's creating a lot of jobs and a lot of money. If it's creating a lot of jobs and a lot of money, why are people still struggling? This doesn't make any sense. It's just just say things and then people's reality right in front of them doesn't exist anymore. Hey, by the way, you have a, you have a great job and you're making a lot of money. Guy who's making $35,000 a year. Oh, okay, I feel better now about the fact that I have no idea how I'm gonna eat next week. What, is, what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything. That's why they don't talk to people. They talk at people. Then they yep. tell people, they tell the television pundits and the anchors, oh, yeah, so I, I went to West Virginia and they told me that they love me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the process. 100%. Yeah, I'm sure he, he, he talked to a lot of them. He's probably hanging out at those uh, coal mine protests um, at the strike there. Uh, yeah, so uh, Joe Manchin, uh, welcome to the Billionaire Defense Force. Uh, your service is greatly appreciated. Uh, you know, I'm gonna give an honorary commission to Kirsten Cinema. Technically, she's not against it, but you don't think that they talked? If Mansion had been for it, you don't think that she would have stepped in to stop it? I don't know for sure. It's just speculation, but I know that they're not gonna allow any taxes on literally anything. And while doing that, they're also gonna spit in your mouth a little bit. <laughs> Take a look at this. I don't like the connotation that we're targeting different people as people that basically they contributed to society. They contributed to society. Yep. He's worried about taxes on billionaires. He's also worried about creating an entitlement culture. And it's weird then that he appears to think that they're entitled to protections. They're entitled to not be taxed because they contributed something. They created jobs. They gave a lot of money to philanthropic pursuits. Apparently it didn't hurt him that bad though because their personal wealth has exploded over the past couple of years. They're doing just fine with all this philanthropic activity they're doing, but not you. You are all lazy. You are all doing fine with, as JR pointed out, your $35,000 that you're making per year.
But the billionaires are the good people. They deserve respect. They deserve uh, protection. They deserve representation. And they've got it from Joe Manchin. This is the guy that talks every week with the head of Exxon Mobil and with other you know, a-hole billionaires and all that. And this is what they're getting for that. They have an actual representative who's uh, there to protect their interests. So you got on this side, you got Joe Manchin that's, that's going with the line of they're doing all this for the American people. They're doing all this, they're doing all that. Why is it, why is it that it's their responsibility and we have to don them as these people who are there to protect the American people and provide us with our economic structure and our jobs in situations like that. And we just trust random people. What, what is it about yeah. them that makes them such, such awesome Americans that they're better than everyone else, that they just hand everything out and they're just, what, because they have money, they have a better moral compass? What is the connection? Somebody needs to ask him, what is this full connection? Because on, on what you may, I guess, call the Democratic side with Joe Manchin, he's saying things like this. Yesterday, I listened to Mitch McConnell uh, uh, gargle on the Senate floor and talk about how this is about, uh, they're, they're trying to raise tax on the American people. How many people does this affect, John? How many people in all of America does this affect? The tax? Yes. It would not It would not affect a whole bunch of them. 700 people. But yep. Mitch McConnell went on the Senate floor yesterday and said, hey, you know, they're trying to raise taxes on hardworking Americans. The money that you put into this system, they're gonna try and raise the taxes on you. Guarantee you the 700 people that would be affected by this <laughs> are not waiting for yeah. Mitch McConnell to provide them with some kind of an escape from having to pay an extra tax. He's the, they, they, they push this narrative that all these, you as a regular American, they're raising taxes on you. Yeah. They're raising taxes on 700 people who are billionaires and multi, multi, multi-millionaires that have made $100 million or more for three consecutive years. Yep, but hold on, because right now, JR, they're billionaires and multi, multi, multi-millionaires, yet yeah, now, but what would they be after this tax? <laughs> Billionaires and multi, multi, multi millionaires. They would be so fine, but we can't tax them. And as a result of that, we can't afford to pay a bunch into this infrastructure bill. So that's gotta be smaller. So we're gonna cut out a bunch of stuff. He doesn't even care which. Remember when he was like, you got three priorities, choose one of them. I don't even care, choose whichever one you want. Maybe it's elder care, maybe it's community college, I don't care. Those are things that would actually substantially change people's lives. But for these billionaires, it is just a number that their accountant looks at every once in a while. It has no effect on their lives, but we can't actually change it. Yeah. Now, uh, with these additional members of the Billionaire Defense Force, we did ask you yesterday which of the uh, current billionaire boys that we were talking about, you found their commentary to be most reprehensible. And so at tyt.com slash polls, we put it up. Uh, we've now got the results. So you had Mitch McConnell. You had Mitt Romney, Mitch McConnell was like, this is a harebrained scheme. And Mitt Romney was like, they're great people, bro. Uh, people did not like Mitch McConnell. 80.28% of you voted for Mitch McConnell, uh, just shy of 20% for Mitt Romney. So Mitch McConnell, you are the worst. Congratulations, <laughs> sir. Wanna just throw in as a last uh, last second comment. Um, Manchin's bad on this and Cinema's almost certainly bad on this. But I also want you to remember that the others are not great. I don't know exactly where they stand, but uh, Senator Mark Warner said, these are complicated ideas and the devil's in the details. No, the devil's in the Senate, buddy. <laughs> That's where he's <laughs> hanging out these days. John Tester said, "Oh, of course, I think that, you know, I mean, I got to look at it. Yeah, you look hard. You look really hard at that billionaire tax and figure out where you stand on it. Anyway. Jerry, you want another uh, another billionaire boy? Oh, I'm ready. I got, I got a billionaire boy to beat all other billionaire boys <laughs> here. Let's talk about it. Elon Musk piped up yesterday to say that this uh, talk about a billionaire tax, no, no, you don't want it. I mean, I, it's not that I don't want it, it's that you don't want it. Because Elon Musk, like all billionaires, is principally concerned with how the poors are doing financially. So there was this tweet. Uh, from a guy named M uh, Rick McCracken, that can't be real. But anyway, he had a uh, sort of form letter template for billionaires to uh, contact their representatives. This is a very necessary social service. We need to make things easier for the billionaires. They couldn't give it to their staff to type up a template. But anyway, uh, Elon Musk responded to it saying exactly, eventually they run out of other people's money and then they come for you. This is exactly the same thing as when Donald Trump used to tweet those memes of 
they're not coming after me, they're coming after you. And yep. I'm in the way and I trust it exactly as much as that. Elon Musk isn't worried about being taxed. He's worried about you being taxed <laughs> someday in a hypothetical future. And isn't it great, JR, to have a hero? We have an Iron Man looking out for our interests, theoretically. It's crazy. I, like you know, I, I appreciate Elon Musk for looking out for the billions of dollars that I'm going to make eventually after I work this minimum <laughs> wage job for the rest of my life. Because I'm going to get there, right? Oh, I'm sorry. But until the politicians fight back against me making more than a dime more than the minimum wage, um, I'll get there though because I'm gritty. I'm a hard worker. I'm going to make it because Elon Musk is protecting me once I do make it. Until then, he's suppressing me. He's supporting politicians that are definitely trying to ruin everything about my life. But you know, it's okay. Hey, if I get cancer, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna keep working hard because you know what? Elon Musk is looking off me until I'm a billionaire. This is the process. You're supposed to write a letter to your elected official to protect Elon Musk, who is looking to destroy you. This is our political system. This is the way many people in the country who are thoughtful voters go to the go to the booth. This is the way they think. I need to protect billionaires because I might be one one day, as they stop me from ever making it. Exactly. And yet there is a whole bunch of generally guys on the internet whose whole personality is, how dare you criticize Elon Musk? He has my interest at heart. Someday he's gonna take me mini golfing. I swear, I'm just waiting by the phone for that call. Um, no, he might as well be an alien. He might as well be a cyborg from space for all that he has in common with you or me or literally anyone else. He is so incredibly wealthy that on Monday, he made $36.2 billion. <laughs> made. He's worth $36.2 billion more than he was the day before because Tesla's stock price went up to an insane amount. And look, that was actually sort of based on something that Hertz is going to purchase 100,000 Tesla electric vehicles. That's good. That's actually something to do with a company. It makes some sense. Um, the company is worth a trillion dollars. I think we can have a bit of a problem with that valuation. That seems a little bit crazy. And Musk is now worth more than any other person on the planet. Almost a hundred billion dollars more than the second wealthiest person, Jeff Bezos, who's worth $193 billion. Now that has nothing to do with anything. It's they're just all made up numbers, not found anything. It's a perfectly fine car company. They have some issues with quality control and they're definitely gonna result in some people being killed. And they don't respect unions whatsoever. But the fact that he's the richest man in the world doesn't make any sense. Anyway, that's not why you should not be protecting them. It's that plus don't tax me. You don't get anything because for you to get something, we would need to be taxed. And I don't care about you, I care about me. I've got 300 billion, I want 400 billion, and I love the idea of 500 billion. And if every peasant across America needs to get pushed down into the dirt, if I need to walk on your heads to get to this imaginary figure that doesn't mean anything and has no effect on my life, I will do that. Which is fine, if millionaires and billionaires want to tweet about how cool and clever Elon Musk is, that's fine. The idea that a single working class American would ever do that is only the result of massive propaganda from this rich a-hole who only cares about other rich a-holes and mostly just about himself. If you notice, the, the things that he responds to with his tweets are there to galvanize and continue to push this same narrative. So if you think he wakes up in the morning and goes, oh man, whew. James Wilson out in Nebraska, man. I really got to help him out. He must yep. not have he must not have a good shot at, at this American dream every day. No, he goes on Twitter and finds things to support his money. Yep, his money. So his he's money. saying it blatantly, openly, and out loud. It's not a hidden thing. He's not pulling some kind of tricky perziki move on you, where he's all uh, where he's all for the common people, and then in backhanded, he's actually self dealing for himself. Yep. He's doing it all right in front of you, and he's asking you to help him. Hundred percent. Uh, our producers uh, figured out that if you took what he made in four hours on Monday, that is equal to the amount that uh, the experts estimate would solve world hunger. Four hours on Monday. How much does he care? 
And will he be broke after that? Business. Will he be broke then? No. no, he would He would make more money while he was donating it. Anyway, that's all the time that we have uh, for our first hour. Thank you everybody on our linear platforms for watching. If you're on Twitch or YouTube, members app, all those other places, uh, we've got more coming for you. Um, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about Cavuto and Kyle Rittenhouse and a whole bunch of other stuff. I will see you in just a few. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.